So those are some great adjectives, um, I think. They're, they're kind of about going deep rather than superficial yes. exterior um, behavior. They're really about the attitude of the heart that gives stability to yeah. life and order. Yeah, I, and I, I just want to mention again to our audience that we're, um, we're talking about Entrusted Ministries and actually uh, looking at a book that was authored by Betsy Corning. Um, forward, though, by Dave Corning. That must be the better half, right? He's pretty now. happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's called Entrusted with a Child's Heart, a Biblical Study in Family Life. You can see it on the screen. Also comes with a workbook. There's flashcards. You can do this in a small group setting. Um, you could you know, bring it to your church or you know, do it at home in a small mm -hmm. group. And, um, and I, it's, it's rich. It's, and it's very practical. It's not just like some you know, spiritual book, but just some very practical things things that you can do um, to strengthen your family. Um, so the next one that I cornered here was when it's hard for parents to let go. Um, and this is under the establishing authority um, section, right? Um, and, uh, and you have like lamentations in here, it's good for a man that he should bear the yoke in his youth. And, but you talk about this, you know, when it's hard for parents to let go, and I'd like you to elaborate a little bit on that, right? What, what do you mean, right? Well, part of it, part of authority is that we don't have 100% authority for the 20 or so years that our children will be with us, but it starts that way. And when they learn to respect and live under authority, then our authority starts to wane so that when they're ready to leave home, we're more guiding them by influence. So it's hard though, because I've had three children leave home and you always want to just grab them and say, there's a few more things I want to tell you. I don't think I've told you everything. And they're <laughs> saying, yes, mom, you have told me. You can text it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do do that. Mm -hmm. But I think that the wonderful thing about it is to know that God is with us mm -hmm. in this, mm -hmm. that greater is, I mean, um, you know, he who began a good work right. in you That's will right. be faithful to complete it. Mm -hmm. So we aren't, we don't have to take the pressure of being the sanctifiers of our children. The Lord is the sanctifier of our mm -hmm. children. And that is a freeing thing for moms. Yeah. The, the reason I wrote this, number one, was to encourage moms. I see so many discouraged moms. Mm -hmm. And I feel if I get up and speak and they haven't been encouraged, then I feel like mm -hmm. I failed because the Word of God is so encouraging and that's, that's really the heart of this mm -hmm. book. It's to be encouraged with the Word because the Word has power. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, Nancy, in your work with women, you know, what have you seen in this area? Uh, Betsy's been um, articulating it so well, that fear of, of letting go, <laughs> right? Yeah, and I'm kind of in that stage right now where I see my daughter ready to graduate high school and, you know, you kind of look back and think, have I, you know, told to her everything, everything I want to tell? And right. Yeah, I mean, I think that's in all of us and I think that's partly why God gives us husbands to kind of balance us out. Um, you mean they don't worry as much as we do? Or? Well, not near as much. You know, I just remember <laughs> along the way, you know, it was always like our role is to, you know, let out just enough freedom mm -hmm. for our child that they don't, we always said that you don't hang yourself, with, you know, but just right. keep letting it out. Right. And, um, you know, I really see that changing, even, you know, my daughter's 18 now, and just see how, um, you know, it's encouraging when you feel like, okay, you know, she's really, do, you know, has a handle on a lot of things, yeah. but it's also very scary. And you just know that's part of the process, that yeah. we cannot yeah. hold on to our children yeah. forever. We were never meant to. Right. You know, right. our job is really to work ourselves out of a job. Yeah. And yet, um, you know, we want to see our children yeah. um, grow and, and be strong for the Lord. Yes. Yeah. And so, mm -hmm. you know, it's, and again, I think that's why this ministry is so rich. There are just so many tools. Mm -hmm. You know, how do we establish authority in a child's life so that mm -hmm. as they learn to live under our authority, um, they're living, learning to live under God's yes, authority, yeah. and then when they do move out, um, you know, hopefully they continue right. Right. Um, to live. Yeah, it must be it must be a, a you know kind of a common statement because my daughters have said the same thing to me. They'll say, "Mom, you you've taught us, <laughs> you've equipped us." We got it, Mom. We're, yeah. we're okay, you know, um, and 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 it and that's that's a good reminder to mm -hmm. us that, yeah, they they did get it. They heard, you know, and that we can entrust them, um, you know, to him, 
I've seen yeah. my 20 somethings grow immensely and feel like they're they're bearing fruit off the foundation that we set. Yes. And you know, we're not going to all do everything right. Mm -hmm. I, none of us are going right. to do everything right. right. So, j just to give ourselves like let's just do the best we can and um, knowing that those things take root and they eventually bear fruit. Yes. So, yes. Thank the Lord for that. Well, and he does promise that, right? Yes, he does. Um, so let's talk about this one. Um, this whole, you got this whole section on committed to discipline, right? And this following through on our commitment. And I must tell you that when I saw that, it did make me think of like, you know, when my kids were small and, you know, and, and, uh, uh, but they were they were they weren't too small to not understand when mm -hmm. mom said no you're not don't yes. do that and 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 so if I said I was going to do something then I went through on it even if it was a little pat on the butt or something you know um, and how important that is to to really be committed to your word and to follow through and so yes. talk about that following through on our commitment because I would think that there are in our society that you know we've got a lot of wavering folks out there mm -hmm. and that they're they're being pressured by um, by the culture right mm -hmm. so talk about that well I think commitment is huge even for our children to understand commitment and see commitment modeled between mom and dad mom and dad are committed to each other and mom and dad are committed to you mm -hmm. so what is it that we're committed to in our families and when we are disciplining or we're teaching or instructing or whatever we're doing that they have the sense that we're committed not to just see it through but we're committed to their well-being and I think that just gives children a great sense of stability but uh, when I'm thinking some of these things about committed we we break down uh, very much in the book how to how what biblical discipline looks like what uh, biblical instruction looks like what biblical encouragement looks like but we need to be able to distinguish those three things so that we're properly applying mm -hmm. our training mm -hmm. or we're gonna you know we're not gonna right. we're gonna you know be teaching somebody when really what they needed was uh, possibly discipline yeah. so to break it down for people so that they are sure that mm -hmm. their discipline is effective or their training is effective mm -hmm. is, is yeah. the first part so any thoughts on this Nancy I, I feel like we live in a very non-committal kind of society right yeah. um, and and just wondering how, like when you're working with women what you see what you hear from them so thoughts on this uh, yeah, you know, it, 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 it is encouraging to hear from women, too, because I think we live in a very permissive society, and I think, you know, people hold commitments sometimes very loosely, and, you know, in, in parenting, um, you know, how key to be sure that you are following through. I mean, mm -hmm. kids pick up on that, and they can tell, and, you know, I just remember early on thinking my husband and I needed to really work out what our mm -hmm. family standards were so that our kids like grew up. Like your core up, values, Our core right? values, yeah. so they grew up knowing, you know, right. what they were and, and could, you know, then when they became teenagers, it's not that they didn't push back a little bit, but they certainly knew that those things stood and right. that we, you know, we were committed to those, that we were not gonna back down. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, well, and, and I think it also develops relational trust too, because if you continue to sure. renege or right. there isn't follow through, then how do, how do children learn what trust is. There has to be integrity yeah. or they won't learn trust and they won't learn respect and they'll learn if they can manipulate you, which are all chapters, uh, chapters in, the, in the book. One of the things though is to make learning easy for the kids to say you must obey, well then what does that mean? Right. Mm -hmm. So right. teach it means all the way, right away and with a happy heart. So it's, it's their attitude, it's mm -hmm. just not their external. And, and what does that mean, all the way? Mm -hmm. Well, that means completely, you know. Yeah. If you are to make your bed, but you forget to put the pillows on, that's not all the way. So, mm -hmm. we, you teach them simply what it means. And one of the really oh, man, big... man, you can tell she's structured there. Oh. You gotta put those <laughs> yes. pillows on. <laughs> and you know what, it's so funny because... Uh, maybe I like that, that though, <laughs> I like that. Because that would be me, I think, I don't know. It's just like, all the way. And, uh, <laughs> So we always, that's one of the sayings in our family. We actually have what we call a family plan. We have five things. And one of them is work hard, finish strong. So if you're 
not completely following through on a task. You didn't finish strong, and that's, that's one of our family mottos. But the other thing that's very true about integrity comes from Matthew 537. Let your yes be mm -hmm. yes and your no be no. So we teach women how to uh, be truthful with their kids. And when they say something, mm -hmm. they have to mean it and they have to follow through because if we don't, then the kids will figure out all sorts sure. of ways not to listen. And instead of training them in obedi obedience, we're possibly training them really not to even listen. Right, right. Well, and teaching them what the benefits mm -hmm. of obedience are. Sure. It's not like we're asking you to do this just because it makes us Absolutely. feel good, but but there are benefits to this. Because if you you know if you follow through, if you do it all the way, right? If you work hard, there are benefits to that. And then we see those those skills are transferable into the workplace mm -hmm. and into mm -hmm. other areas in society. And they you know they they, they will you know become successful on the job successful right. in school because they Certainly. have the, they, they have they've learned those skills well one of the reasons we call it entrusted with a child's heart and not entrusted with a child's behavior <laughs> is because it's not just about the external that's right we that's really right. want to teach mothers and fathers how to have a deep connection with their kids mm -hmm. so that when they're 35 and they have three kids they can't wait mm -hmm. to be at your house for Thanksgiving yes yeah. we don't want parents to growing their children up and thinking, yeah, when you're 18, you can leave. We don't want that. Yeah. We want people yeah. to think generation after generation, we're yes. a family and family means something. Yes. It really means something yeah. to mm -hmm. us. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And so we're, um, I mean, I know the website is up on the screen and we're uh, speaking from um, Betsy Corning's book, uh, actually in its second edition. And, it, and we were told earlier that it's gone to six continents already. Wait, did I say that right? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, just want to make sure. Um, I want to make sure I missed some place. But it's called Entrusted with a Child's Heart, and it's a biblical study in family life. And it's such a, a, a book of rich resources and, um, you know, just practical things that you can do, but practical things that are that are uh, really rooted in, um, you know, in, in biblical truths. Um, and so we've been just kind of going through it and kind of highlighting, at least I'm highlighting some of the things that I thought were, were good because there's so much in here. And this can be done in a, a small group setting. It can be done at a church, comes with a workbook, um, has um, uh, some fun uh, cards in the back here. I kind of wanted to tear them out like memory cards. They are memory cards. Yeah. And I, th I mean, I think that, you know, I think memorization is a great thing. I think it's a lost art, actually. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I just do. I think it's a lost art. <laughs> that comes from my navigator background, and I am very, <laughs> very much about that, that thing again. It's, <laughs> it's, it will help women so much, and dads, when they learn a verse and then a situation comes up, it's really the power of God yeah. in our lives. Yeah. So, yeah. So I want, let's see, I want to go through a couple others of these. Um, yeah, so I thought this one was really good. You have like a rating scale in here for <laughs> uh, chi your child's manipulative skills. Oh, yeah. So I didn't realize manipulation was a skill, <laughs> but I guess it, it, can, it be. can be. It can right? be very artful. Right, and I guess I guess it can become a skill if like you do it and it works, yes. and you do it again and it works, and then it becomes a part of your skill set, you know? Yes. And you have things, oh yeah, so you have like a zero to five uh, or yeah, like a zero to five rating scale in here, and and I love some of the things that you said. Playing one parent against the other, like, gee, how many of us yes. what parents know that one, Big right? No, no. You have comparing you to other parents. Well, so and so's parents, right? And, I, and I'm going to want sure. you to talk about these, but I just want to mention them: making accusations or cruel remarks, right? Um, uh, let's see. Demanding justification, um, whining, begging, grumbling, complaining, even screaming. Right? It's like you're in the grocery store. Yes. I want that candy bar or whatever. <laughs> right? Pointing out your weaknesses. Well, you never mm -hmm. or you don't. Right? Saying they will do something, then not doing it. Feigning, like faking behaviors, crying, feeling sick, too tired or afraid 
procrastination, making excuses, putting themselves down, ignoring you or trying to pretend like they didn't hear you. And there's more. Oh, there's one more. Talking you out of a disciplinary action. <laughs> well, I'll do the dishes for five weeks, right? <laughs> so <laughs> talk about this. I love this. And it, and it really points out like 13, 13 yes. is like a, what, an unlucky number? <laughs> I probably could have added a few more, but like uh, going crazy when you're on the phone. But uh, <laughs> I think that uh, this is something all mothers deal with. And this is the difference, I think, between what we do. There's, a, like you said, a lot of theory, but there's not the books that tell what it's like to be a mom in the trenches. Yes. Some mm -hmm. of these things are more pet manipulations of maybe a three or four or five-year-old, but some of them are definitely pet manipulations or disrespectful behaviors of a 15, 16, 17-year-old. So the title is really called Recognizing mm -hmm. and Handling ma Manipulations because we get caught up and we don't even realize it's happening. Yes. Yes. So we have to be like, <laughs> oh, that's a manipulation. Yeah. My son, well, my middle son was 16 when I wrote that chapter and he was helping me do some PowerPoints. And I said, uh, he said to me, Mama, do you know which one is mine? He was testing himself and I said well yeah it was this one and he said no mom it was this one <laughs> and I thought but I was always just you know they get you <laughs> and so they, they work they work yeah. because they yeah. know the things that will work yeah. with us yeah and I I almost titled the chapter I want what I want when I want it <laughs> and I want it right now or I don't want to do what I don't want to do and I don't want to do it ever yeah. so that's the feeling that parents have yeah. I mm -hmm. just can't get my child to respond and do this simple little task yeah. why because they're manipulating yeah. you yeah. and or I you know it's just it just gets to be so difficult for moms yeah. especially. I, I just think that that one section in and of itself like is so powerful and you could spend a lot of time just on that. Were you going to say something? Well, I Nancy? was just thinking the very first time I took this, I mean, every time I led a group through it or went through it myself, you know, y y it was really eye-opening to think that's what this child does, yes. you know? Yes. But just realizing it then equips you because it also helps tell you, like, how do you combat how that? You, you know, combat what do you need it? to yeah. do? And it's interesting because I recently went through this again um, with a group, and it's kind of nice to see, like, you know what? Over the years, we've really made a lot of progress, yeah. and, yeah. you know, I'm not seeing most yeah. of those anymore, you know? Right. But, you, yeah, but you're right. It can be subtle. Like, oh, Mom, I'm your favorite. <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah. To me, that's manipulation, and I would always combat that one because sure. because because I I had some experience with that growing up. I also think about Ishmael and and Isaac, mm -hmm. and, oh, yes. you know, and uh, or no Esau and Jacob, and I think about you know some of those stories. But no, no, I don't have mm -hmm. any favorites. I love you both. I yes. love you both. You know, and mm -hmm. and I would say that regularly. So they got it now. They don't play me on that one. <laughs> <anymore. laughs> But you see the child who wants yeah. to get out of doing that, that chore you asked them to do, yes. or I forgot, or I didn't hear you, or, yeah. you, mm. know, uh, yeah. you know, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. And you just realize that, you know what, that's, that's not a good excuse, yeah, you know, right. and that's not going to happen. <laughs> so I'm going to so. find ways to make sure you do hear me. Absolutely. <laughs> We're here so people can benefit from our many years of experience uh, yes. in these areas. Well, but I think that's huge what you're saying, mm -hmm. right? Like, I so believe in that older shall teach the younger. I do too. And you really need seasoned women. You know, I have a, a, a group of young women between, like, the, you know, 28, 29 to, like, 30 something that I meet with every other mm -hmm. week and it's kind of a mentoring group and these are young women trying to navigate life yes, you know yes. how do I navigate work and the family how do I work with how do I navigate my child what do I if I want to go back to school dealing with finances all these different mm -hmm. kinds of things sure. and we need people in our lives to help us um, navigate and that's really God's way. Yes. That's why I think the church is so vital. Yeah. Because it blends all these ages together where society tends to segment us out. Yes. And we're the moms, the soccer moms, and all our kids are eight. 
but we do. The church is a wonderful place to have older women influence younger women, but so many people don't live near their moms or their yeah. dads. And yeah. I feel like one of the supreme compliments I get is if somebody says, I feel like you're my mom. Yeah. Not that um, I want to replace her, but maybe no. she lives across right. the country and she doesn't get that input in her life that her mom yeah. would give her. Yeah. So